On September 5, 1856, the steamboat Arabia was making its way up the Missouri River, loaded with 222 tons of cargo. Six miles west of Kansas City, it hit a tree snag that tore open its hull. It sank in minutes. Its cargo went down with the ship, and by the next morning was buried under layers of the Missouri's mud and silt. The river changed its course over time. I got old river maps to find out where the river had once been in 1856. And what a surprise. It was now in the middle of a cornfield. I then, with the farmer's permission, went into the field in 1988 and began the search, walking back and forth in a cornfield with a tool with a metal detector called a magnetometer. We found it with a metal detector and then brought out a drill rig and began to test drill to see how deep it was and exactly where it lay. It took us probably a week of drilling to find the sides, the front and the back. Then we could chalk it with white chalk all the way around the boat. And for the first time, there it was. The Arabia was 171 feet long. At that point, down we went. For the excavation of the Arabia to be successful, we had to dig it in the winter. There was big surprises like food products that survived, pickles and pie fillings that you could still eat, barrels of butter that still smelled fresh. There was clothing of all types and shoes. We found 4,000 boots and shoes. We found cooking utensils and beautiful sets of dishware, guns and knives. And by the time we'd finished it four months later, no one was talking about selling the collection. We began the excavation November the 13th of 1988. The museum opened up November the 13th of 1991, three years to the day. But it's very cool. It I mean, is. This, okay. this, just this is impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you see here is rebuilt. What you see there is the real deal. That is incredible. The pitman arm, the structure, and the engine. No kidding. Very cool. You know, Dave, what is your mission going forward? Momentarily, when we go into the collection, you'll see a collection unlike anything you've ever seen. And that's one boat, that's one story. Eventually, the goal would be to have six boats, one from each decade of river travel, from the 20s through the 70s. The Arabia tells the story of the 1850s and the settlers coming west. The boat that we're gonna work on later is one called the Malta, it sank in 1841, bringing Indian trade goods to the frontier, the Radnor, that we'll look for. Another huge story, carrying military supplies to Port Leavenworth. It's not a story of just steamboats. It's a story about the development of whole and, West. And you're gonna learn some things, aren't you? You will yeah. learn things like you have never learned before. Lead on. Thank Thank you. Where to go. You. Okay. What David has been able to do with his son, Matt, and his team is nothing short of incredible. And I didn't understand the magnitude of what he had done until I stepped foot in the museum. In fact, <laughs> I literally thought the upstairs gift shop part was the museum until he walked us underground. We couldn't bring up the whole boat, so this wood floor that you're on is the boat. This. The barrel up there is the front. This is the back of the boat. The boilers are where they were. The wheel's where it was. Oh, so we're, we're standing. You're standing on the model. Wow. And that's Man, that. did you guys so do a cool. great job. And, and then as a river traveler, that's what Kansas City would have looked like as you paddled your way upstream. I mean, I'm very impressed that you guys Built well, you get a real good idea of scale right here, yes. right? I mean, this is the boat. Yeah, yeah, it is. Let's stroll the deck, shall okay. we, gentlemen? We walk about a football field length of artifacts that are perfectly preserved. It's stunning. It's like nothing I've ever seen in my life. And, and you know, it gives a whole new definition to the term treasure, really. Where are we going next? We're going into a room that we call our general store. Wow. Matt, uh, is it fair to say a lot of the things we've seen that when we walk by would have ended up in a store just like this for sale? Is that what was happening? Absolutely, yeah. Most of the stuff was going up for general stores just for resale, so that's why you see so many of the same thing. That's what I was it was going up for folks for the winter. They were the 18 wheelers of the day. Just yeah. and, the, and the quality of this stuff. I mean, we're talking about the frontier, right, at this point. But people are still wanting quality, and they're still willing to pay people for it. People were people. Yeah. They wanted nice things. And they would import them, if not from the States, from Europe. Yeah, like those plates, where are those from? Exactly, came from England. From England, yeah, that would make sense. They had to be carrying alcohol. Did you find anything like that? In the boat, downstairs in the cargo hold, trapped, filled with mud and water, 
were cases of champagnes and cognac Ooh. and gin, like you see over there. Wow. wow. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I have I have treasure envy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from you, yeah, well, that's a compliment. I, I, that I, is no, awesome. It's, it's spectacular. You had to resist the urge to sell some of this stuff. You no, know, we've never had that. Never had No, it. we never had well, thought, let's sell a boot. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's play something. We're all right? kind of attached to this <laughs> yeah, stuff. It's like our little no, children, I, I, you know? I absolutely applaud you for it, but mm. have you ever had it evaluated? Has anybody came up with a number and oh, said... Oh, sure. It's worth millions and millions of dollars, the collection itself. It has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got real treasure and you got real history here. 